Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. Today's video is going to be me talking to you about the books that I got recommended by Pinterest. I know, it seems like a very strange place to get book recommendations from, but for some reason Pinterest just likes to recommend me books. So I would be scrolling through Pinterest, as you do, and some days I just happen upon the front cover of a book on my home feed as I'm scrolling. And a lot of the times it, they, the books that I'm recommended do actually look like books that I would be interested in reading. So I've started saving these front cover pictures to my gallery in hopes that maybe one day I might actually happen upon one of these books in a real bookshop where I could buy them. But I thought it would be an interesting thing to do to show you all of the books, well not all of the books, but some of the books that I've been recommended by Pinterest. And then I was thinking I would probably do a video at some point in the future where I actually read some of the books that I have been recommended on Pinterest. So let me know if you'd be interested in that, but I'm probably going to do it anyway just because I'm interested to do that. But if you are, then I would be even happier to do it. We're just going to jump straight into it. There's no precursor for these books and they are in no particular order. The only order that they are in is in the order <laughs> that Pinterest has recommended them to me, dating from oldest to most recent. So here we go. I will put pictures, I'll put the front cover pictures up on the screen here next to me as I talk about them. One of the first books that Pinterest recommended to me was a book called Scandalous Women. The Lives and Loves of History's Most Notorious Women by Elizabeth Carey Maine, or Maan. I don't know how to pronounce that surname every time I see it. Then the next one is Princesses Behaving Badly, Real Stories from History Without the Fairy Tale Endings by Linda Rodriguez McRobbie, as far as I can read. Some of these front cover pictures are quite blurry, so I can't always tell. Then next we have The Man Who Loved Books Too Much, the True Story of a Thief, a Detective, and a World of Literary Obsession by Alison Hoover Bartlett. Now this really seems like something right up my street. It seems like it's going to be a mystery slash thriller kind of book, but it's also based on a true story, which makes it even more interesting. I think I've seen this book in a bookshop before, because the book cover does seem very familiar to me, so I feel like I have seen this book in an actual bookshop before. I didn't buy it, but now I will know for future reference. The next book Pinterest has recommended to me is Keeper of Enchanted Rooms by Charlie N. Holmberg. Holmberg? I have seen this book on booktube floating around a couple of times before, but I still, I don't really know what it's about because I haven't heard about it in a long time and I can't remember what it's about. But. It seems to be about a keeper of enchanted rooms. The next book is If Schools Didn't Exist, A Study in the Sociology of Schools by Niels Christie. Translated and edited by Lucas Cohn and Joaquin Wiwura. <laughs> Sorry for very badly mispronouncing that surname. Um, Foreword by Judith Suiza. I'm also probably mispronouncing that last name but I don't really want to read this book I just thought it would be a very funny addition to this video and I f find it very interesting that somebody wrote a book about what if schools didn't exist moving on how to disappear completely and never be found by Doug Richmond I would very much like to read this book because I kind of do sometimes feel like I just want to disappear into some remote place somewhere where nobody can get to me and where nobody knows where I am and I can just live blissfully in my own existence for the rest of my life all by myself alone. <laughs> but that's only sometimes. Most of the time I enjoy living in a society. But sometimes I do want to disappear. The next book is The Diary of a Bookseller by Sean Bithel or Bithel. I think I have heard about this book before as well. It seems very familiar and it, the title and the front cover of the book look very familiar to me. I think I have seen this 
on booktube before but pinterest recommended it to me so if pinterest thinks that this is a good book and that i should read it who am i to disagree the next book is city of incurable women by maud casey i have absolutely no idea what this book could be about i don't even have a guess as to what this could be about but the front cover looks very interesting it does look a little bit like this woman is being exercised but also it could be a medical condition that's affecting her and it could also be that this is a book about women in insane asylums in the olden days when people thought that women being depressed meant that they were crazy and needed to be sent to an insane asylum and be literally put in solitary confinement to cure them which is probably the worst thing you could do to treat depression or any kind of mental illness to be frank i went on a very weird tangent there that was not necessary but this is what happens when i look at book covers and try and think of what happens in books and also just think of the way that women were treated and still kind of are in some parts of the world anyway <laughs> before i go into a deep wormhole on this subject let's move on to the next book which is a much more light-hearted book the next book is goblin mode how to Get Cozy, Embrace Imperfection, and Thrive in the Muck by Michaela Coyle. I don't necessarily want to enter goblin mode. I don't very much enjoy living in the muck. But Pinterest thought I needed this book, apparently. Pinterest knows that my bedroom sometimes does look like a tornado has passed through it. And it would like to help me feel less bad about it. And I appreciate the sentiments, but no thank you, Pinterest. I would rather just not live in a tornado room. The next book is Becoming Fluent, How Cognitive Science Can Help Adults Learn a Foreign Language by Richard Roberts and Roger Kreutz. I would very much like to actually read this book because I would like to learn more languages and would also just like to become fluent in the languages that I do already speak, like German, which is quite sad <laughs> that I'm not fluent, because I have been speaking it my entire life, but not often enough and not with enough people to actually be fluent in it. So, this would be a book that I would actually pick up if I found it in a bookshop, and I would read and I would hopefully try and implement in my life in learning new and improving my already acquired languages. The next book is kind of a funny story because I read Far From the Madding Crowd by Thomas Hardy last year and since then I have just been seeing Thomas Hardy things books everywhere. It's like he's haunting me from his grave because I didn't very much enjoy his book. So now I just keep happening upon more of his books and people keep talking about his books and recommending his books. And I feel personally attacked. No, I don't really, but I think it's very funny that since reading one of his books, all of his other books are just happening to come into my life somehow. But anyway, this particular Hardy book is The Return of the Native and to be quite honest I would buy this book I don't know that I would ever read it I probably would end up reading it but I would buy this book literally just to display it on my bookshelf because the book cover is one of the most beautiful book covers I think I have ever seen in my life and I would honestly buy a print of this book cover and hang it on my wall in a frame just because I think it's so beautiful. And then people would come into my house and say, oh, do you really love The Return of the Native by Thomas Hardy? And I'll say, no, I haven't read it. I just really like the cover. The next book is The Library of the Unwritten, Join the Library, Raise Hell, by A.J. Hackwith. And, I mean, Join the Library, Raise Hell. If that hasn't ever made you want to read a book, then I don't know what will. So I have 
really very little to say about this book. I see it has some French on the front cover, so I don't know if it was translated from French or if it just takes place somewhere in France. But I'm very intrigued to read this book, so I will be picking it up sometime in the future, probably. The next book is Rewild Yourself, Making Nature More Visible in Our Lives by Simone Barnes. This book was the start of a plethora of rewilding and very nature-inspired and living more in tune with nature kind of books that were recommended to me on my home feed. And I'm not mad about it, but also <laughs> I feel like Pinterest is trying to send me a message. And I don't know how I feel about receiving this message. The next book is The Year of Living Virtuously. And then underneath it says, Weekends Off. A Meditation on the Search for Meaning in an Ordinary Life by Teresa Jordan. The Year of Living Virtuously. I'm assuming this is a how-to kind of book of step-by-step -step instructions of how to live more virtuously, but it could also be a memoir, and I don't really know. But will I ever find out? Probably not. I don't think I will ever buy this book. The next book is Rooted by Leander Lin Haupt, an author of Mozart's Starling, Life at the Crossroads of Science, Nature, and Spirit. This is another one of those books that was very nature-inspired and spiritual, and being more in tune with your inner self and nature and all of those things. And um, I don't know if I would ever read this book, but I also don't know that I would never read this book, you know? I don't know how I feel about this book. But anyway, moving on. The History of the World in 100 Plants by Simon Barnes. Is this the same person? Oh. <laughs> It is the same person as the person who wrote Rewild Yourself, and I totally read the, the, the author's name wrong when I said it was Simone Barnes and not Simon the first time, but it is Simon Barnes. Now this book is something I would be interested to read, this The History of the World in 100 Plants. The book cover looks really intriguing, it looks like one of those old illustrations that they used to put or do put in all old biography biography in old biology books this looks a lot like something that may have been painted or drawn somewhere in the 1800s when people were doing lots of exploration all over the world and finding new plants and new peoples and new cultures and new habitats and were very fascinated by all of these things and I don't know if that's what this book is really about but it seems like it could be something similar to that the next book is Sacred Earth, Sacred Soul by John Philip Newell. Celtic wisdom for reawakening to what our souls know and healing the world. Now this seems like a very spiritual book. And it seems like it could be very interesting, but it seems like it could also be very woo-woo. And very la-di-da, and very be at one with your inner child. And all those kinds of things. And um, I don't know how I feel about it, but I do also feel like the Celts, they, they know some things that w the rest of us don't know. And so I might read this book. I don't know if I would believe anything I read in it, but I might read it just to find out. The next book is A Man Came Out of a Door in the Mountain, a novel by Adrian Harun. The blurb on the on the top says mythical, magical, and chillingly real by Jess Walter, author of We Live in Water. Now this seems like the kind of book that I would love. I've also come to realize that I very much <laughs> want to read. On my want to read list there are a lot of books with the word house in the title or with the word mountain in the title. Now I don't know what that says about me but maybe I just want a house in the mountains. And then the most recent and the last book on this list is The Kamogawa Food Detectives by Hisashi Kashiwai, the Japanese bestseller, translated by Jesse Kirkwood, and it has a cute little cat in a bowl on the front cover and what looks like 
some sort of broth and some noodles in two separate bowls. And if that doesn't make you want to read the book, also the fact that it's the Kamogawa food detectives. I don't know what why people would need to be detectives for food, but that just makes me want to read the book even more. With all that said, that was all of the books that Pinterest has recommended to me so far, or all of the ones that I have saved at least. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please let me know below. Please let me know if I have introduced you to a new book that you think you might want to read. And also let me know if you want me to make a video specifically where I read books from this list. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you again next week with another video. Bye!